let's have a look at how to create page numbers here inside of InDesign. So up under File, New Document, I'm not worried about what any of these settings are, except I want to make sure that facing pages is turned off. I'll turn them back on in a later example. So facing pages is off, choose OK. And then here inside of the pages panel, I'm just going to add a few extra pages like so. So we've got four pages in our document just now. So I've just double clicked on page one to make sure I'm on page one. And let's go and grab our type tool. We can choose this tool just here or press the T key. And I'm just going to drag out a massive text box. Of course, page numbers are usually nice and small and tucked away in a corner, but I'm going to make them nice and huge today just so we can really see what's going on. And actually, let's just put in a dummy number. I'll just put in uh, page three and let's just make this very visible. So I'll raise this up to 200 points. Now we want to tuck it into the bottom right corner. So I'm thinking let's right align this. And a nice little trick if you didn't know, um, with your cursor in the text box or with the text box selected, if you go up under object, come down to text frame options, vertical justification, you can set that to bottom, choose okay. And now whatever you type in here, that will be nicely tucked into the bottom right corner. Okay, so we've set that up, that's looking great. So let's just clear that out. So we've got our flashing cursor there, ready to insert our page number. Now, we of course want to do this uh, automatically. We don't want to be manually typing in the page number on each page. So we want to go up to type, insert special character, markers, and current page number. That's what we're looking for. Also notice the keyboard shortcut. Yes, it's a huge one, but if you do this a lot, you might want to remember it. On a Mac, it's Command Option Shift plus the letter N. On Windows, that's Control Alt Shift N. So it's basically all of the modifier keys on either platform plus the N key, N for page number. So let's insert that. There you can see it is coming in nicely. There's number one. So if I was to say copy that, go to page two, edit paste in place, so that's working perfectly, but of course, that's the extremely tedious way to do things. So let's go back to, I've just deleted that on page two. Let's delete that. Actually, not just yet. We're going to not delete it. I'm going to cut it. And here we go, edit cut. Now, the reason I'm cutting it is because we're going to paste it in a better place in just a second. But first, I want to draw your attention to something in the pages panel just over here. Notice by default, every single page in InDesign has the A master applied to it. That's what that little A is at the top of each page. So let's go to the A master. That's that uh, little section at the top of the pages panel just up here. You made a lot of uh, pay particular attention to it. So if I double click on A master, that will take me to A master. And if you look down the bottom left just here, you can see it is indeed showing that we are on A master. So remember I cut that uh, text box to the clipboard. Let's just go up to edit, paste in place. Now we're here on the A master. So what was a number a moment ago now shows us A, nothing is wrong. Actually, everything's perfect because if I now go back to page one, there it is, it shows up as page one. And if I scroll through the document just now, you can see all the different pages are showing up like so. Fantastic, okay, so that's working perfectly. Let's step this up a notch. I'd like to show you an example where you have maybe the opening pages of a document in Roman numerals. So I, 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 and then it jumps into one, two, three. So here in our pages panel, I wanna draw your attention to this little inverted triangle at the top of page one. Again, this is something InDesign throws in by default. That is showing you the start of a new section. Now I'm thinking I want page I, page II, and then I want what is currently page three to read as page one. So what we wanna do is insert a new section starting on page three. So I'm just gonna right mouse click on page three and choose numbering and section options. Now there's lots of crazy things we can potentially change in here, but again, we only just need to keep it nice and simple and check that start section is turned on, which it is. So it's going to start a new section down here on page three. And then we don't want automatic page numbering. We want to force it to start page numbering at one. So I'll choose okay. Now nothing's wrong here at this point, guys. We do get what uh, looks like a serious warning, but it's just letting us know that we are creating a page one down here and we already have one in play. Everything's okay, so let's choose okay. So you can see our document uh, now reads as page one, page two, and then it goes back to page one and two. So the only thing we have left to do at this point is to uh, come back to page one, right mouse click on it and jump to numbering and section options and tell it to have a style of not one, two, three, four, but of I, 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 et cetera.
So if we set it like so, choose OK. Fantastic, there we go. So there's our page I, 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 and then one, two. And for example, if I was to come down and add a few more pages, you can see they happily I, I, one, two, three, four. Fantastic, okay, that's looking great. So that was our nice, simple, single page example. Let's uh, step this up a notch. Let's go up to File, New Document, and let's choose Facing Pages. Choose OK. So again, over here in the Pages panel, if I add a few pages, you can see they come in as pairs. I'll just send this up a little bit. They come in as pairs, like so. OK, so let's get some page numbers going on in the bottom right corner of the right page and the bottom left corner of the left page. So we already know from the previous example, let's go straight to the A master. And let's grab my type tool just up here. Let's drag out a nice big box just here. Again, let's make it very obvious. I'll maybe make this 100 points this time. Again, we're on the bottom right. So I'll just uh, right align that text. Remember that little trick from before, object, text frame options. Set the vertical justification to bottom, which is okay. So you can see if I type in a number, there it is coming in nice down there. So let's go straight up to uh, type. Insert special character, markers, current page number. Fantastic, that's coming in perfectly, very nice. Now we want a number also in the bottom left corner, right? So let me just hold down Alt or Option. I've noticed I'm using my selection tool at the moment. Hold down Alt or Option and I can just drag out a copy of that text box. And let's tuck that into the bottom left corner just there. I'll click inside and left align that text. So let's jump down to say spread two and three just here. And look at that guys, fantastic. So that's working perfectly, but uh, let's step this up a notch even again. Let's come back to the A master just here. Now I'm sure a lot of you are using paragraph styles in formatting of your documents. If not, you definitely want to check it out. They're a fantastic feature. So up under window, styles, paragraph styles. Now guys, there's a, you can dedicate whole entire um, series of movies to paragraph styles. I'm just going to give you one little tip just here, okay? We're not, uh, not gonna be learning paragraph styles from scratch. I'm going to click in this uh, text box on the right just here, and I'm going to add a new paragraph style. And let's call this page number, choose okay. And you can see that that has indeed applied that page number paragraph style to that little bit of text just there. So you can see quickly if I was to edit that paragraph style and just change, say, the color, change it to pink, you can see that's already changing just over there. So that's what's great about paragraph styles, everybody. You can apply paragraph styles to multiple places in your document, and of course you make just a change to that paragraph style, and it will change everywhere else. Okay, but here's the problem. If I were to go and apply that paragraph style to my little page number over here on the left, watch what happens. It jumps itself to the right, side of the text box. And we know that we want it down in the bottom left corner. So there is a nice little trick that I want to point out for you. If we go and edit that paragraph style again, what we are looking for is in the indents and spacing section, alignment, and I'm going to change that to away from spine. Choose OK. And then let's just make sure that's applied everywhere. Yes, yes, OK, so this is looking great. So uh, just to show you what's happened here, this is a two page spread. So that's the spine just there. So if I was to grab this text box and move it over to say here, you can see the text has immediately jumped to the left side because it's moving to the side of the text box that is away from the spine. So I'll just tuck that back in there. And there we are. So that's it there, guys. Uh, page numbers in InDesign. Hope that helps. Catch you later.